with us yet. Pauli Malinaji, uh, this new one is him attacking the MMA community and saying that he wants to put Autumn Wolbov in a, in a coma. In a so, effing coma. In an effing coma. The main thing, if you break it down, is him talking about MMA fans saying how MMA is superior to boxing because it's tougher, it's more dangerous and stuff like that. No. So his argument is obviously there's more deaths in boxing. It's more dangerous because you're hitting the people's head more often. But then MMA guys are like, but you're wearing these big padded gloves, right? So he's talking smack on them. So this is, this is MMA fans who've never fought defending the sport of MMA against a world-class boxer. Um... But it's not like Polly knows a ton about MMA, but he does have his fucking doctorate in boxing. So he put when you when your piece of shit community, uh, and I, the MMA community, it's not a piece of shit. It's just toxic. It's just very dark. Like negativity is 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 what MMA. I they just thrive off of it. I don't. There's no other sport like it. It's true. They just love negative shit. I don't know. That's what it is, man. Uh, so you put when your piece of shit comedian, your piece of shit people talk about we fight with pads and how your sport you're in a dangerous sport like MMA when nothing of the sort happens to which you is why you have a circus of fan base because it's like wrestling. Then the day, no matter what happens to you guys, uh, tapping assures you you're going to see the next the that guy next week. Tapping assures you you're going to see that guy in a few months. In boxing, you don't have those assurances. So there's a respect level even to to the trash talk that we have. Uh, it's being surpassed now. It's being overcome with this garbage that we have from this other community, MMA. For me, I think the way you solve it, seeing one of their own in a coma, seeing one of their own in a fucking coffin, then you say, you know what? This shit is no joke. Um, but there's some truth to what Polly's saying. There's no, there's no other culture like the MMA culture as far as negativity. Um, and I don't, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just a generational thing. If it's because it was started online, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, if one guy loses a fight, he's the worst fighter in the world. Uh, if one guy gets hit with the right hand, he is awful at striking. It's just very bipolar. It's very toxic. Um, boxing, uh, MMA is not more hardcore than boxing. Um, boxing also a sport where you have to. With heavyweight, there's a little exception. There's a little wiggle room, but you have to have years and years and years and years and years of experience and hardships to get to a level where you're going to even start to make money. In MMA, because it's a newer sport, you could be professional in a day. You know, it's there's, it's just a different playing field. So um, put on, for anyone who's never fought, Put on an eight ounce boxing glove and tell me how much padding you have. It's, it's, there's nothing there. It's just to protect the fighters from basically breaking their fucking hands. There's not much there. But watch the glove that fucking Deontay Wilder puts on and that Joshua put on. And you're like, oh shit, these are not padding. This is not, it's not what you think it is. Those are clubs and they're secured with a hand wrap that's basically could punch through cement to break people's faces and jaws. It is not a thing of really of glory or to soften the blows. It, it matter of fact, it makes it worse. Um, uh, but I've also never understood the MMA versus boxing debate. I don't, you can like both. I don't understand it. I mean, Paulie's making it MMA versus boxing. I get it because he's getting so much shit from the MMA community because of what happened with Connor. That's why this is happening. Um, the debate doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't have to like one or hate the other. It's no different. Do you like football? Yeah. Do you like baseball? Yeah. Cool, man. Which one's tougher? I don't know. But if you're watching at a high level, they're all really fucking good, man. They're all really, really good. But the, again, with the MMA community, it's, it's coming from people who have never competed in their lives. The keyboard warriors arguing with a guy who's a world champion boxer. Doesn't make sense. He made a, a point that I thought was a good point, too. So if in MMA, there's ways out, and in boxing, the only way out is to either get knocked out or you have to literally quit, and you can't live that down if you don't get, get off your stool. Yeah, so in boxing, so you're going to take a much bigger hit in your career if you look for an easy way out. So let's say you get hit with a body shot and you stay down. If the crowd can tell, you just kind of bitched your way out of it and stayed down. Your career is pretty fucked. In MMA, 
If I want a way out, and we've seen it happen with multiple guys and very famous fighters, they get caught in a rear naked choke, or they just don't feel like being in, they tap. We're like, all right, cool, we'll see them next week. Yeah. It's it's very, very different when it comes to that. Um, you're not going to see a guy in boxing fight the way Cowboy is in three weeks, you know, or have a fight three weeks ago and then turn around and fight right away in a big fight. It just doesn't work that way in boxing. Nor can you, you know, with, with the, stri- the head trauma. Um, Polly has a point there. There's yeah. easier, there's easier outs in MMA, but there's also way more, way more ways to lose in MMA than there are boxing. Mm. All right. Again, no one wins in this debate. It's a, it, I don't know why it's a boxing versus MMA thing. No one wins. In the beginning, I remember It's like why. strawberry versus vanilla ice cream. They're both great. You, yeah. Why choose? I don't. People take it so personal. You don't own MMA. You don't own boxing. Why would you argue for this? Alrighty. So here it says Khabib's teammates receive reduced suspensions for UFC 242. The two guys that were in that UFC 229 brawl mm-hmm. inside the cage. So they were supposed to get a year. They were, they were actually given a year suspension. And then the director, Bob Bennett of NAC, suddenly gave him 35 days off of that year. See the power of Khabib? Right. Hey, cool. I'm never going to fight Nevada again. Good luck with that. They're like, oh, fuck. These commissions are such a joke, man. So it would have been until October. So now it's they're literally able to fight on the same card that Khabib is supposed to fight on, September 6th. Isn't it great? Five days before, 40s before. It just, it, the commission is just such a joke. They're not going to do shit. What else you got? Here, Mark Mundy was saying that UFC, UFC's parent company, which is WME, they're filing papers to go public. Hmm. <laughs> so that being initial said, stages. The, mm, that's going to be interesting because then you're going to get exact pays. You know, all the, once you go public, then nothing is private anymore. Yeah. And there's going to be some problems when they do that. They if, know this, man. <laughs> What were you going to say? Oh, no. I was laughing at they, they know this. But so if people go go public, it's also kind of a sign that, that it's like an exit strategy. Oh, for, oh, WME, this is this is flip. They're flipping houses. This is not a long-term investment for them. They want to get their money back and get the fuck out. Especially now. What else you got? This is from John Nash. He writes for Bloody Elbow. Some 2018 DAZN business numbers. Only 1% penetration in the American market. ESPN is five times better. ESPN Plus. Uh, ESPN Plus. Yeah, well, that's okay. That's a weird comparison. Uh, 14.3 million North American revenue. Same revenue as Fight Pass made in 2015. They're talking about DAZN. Yeah, so DAZN is growing and it's doing well doing well internationally. But as far as the U.S., that's their biggest problem. Yeah, we've said this forever. Yeah. But if you go over, this is kind of silly, because if you go take the UFC and compare it to one championship or DAZN in England, in China, in Japan, the numbers are going to be way more lopsided. So DAZN's like, all right, yeah, we're just trying to get into fucking America, man. I think they're doing an awful job. I think their marketing's terrible, and they need to figure things out. I think the production's... is, is their biggest problem, the quality that they're producing, but they have all the fighters... They have a, they have what you need to be successful, and that's the fighters. They just have a bad product. That's all. That's and especially Americans are used to such a high level product. You got to work on that, man. That's what. Fuck your money. Fuck all your fighters. You got that. You, the, the quality is terrible. So scroll down. Yeah, in the U.S. 1.1.0, 1. and it's too competitive now. Cause like. I can watch dope shit on YouTube for free. You want me to pay for your service? Yeah, but we have the best fighters. I know, but it's awful to watch, man. So they got to figure out that. Especially in America. You compete with too much shit, man. Too yeah, much stuff. Is issue. But they're new. I'm, I would imagine they figure it out because yeah. they do have the talent. In the fighters. Being new is the, the biggest, is the biggest reason. Yes. All right, here. Our boy, Elias Theodoro. The dime the piece. Cut from the UFC. They say why? Didn't he win four out of his last five or some shit? He won. He was on three fight winning streak and then he lost to Derek. Won Brunson. three out of his last four. I mean, shit, man. It's legit wreck in the UFC. He only has three. So he has what? He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's eight and three in the UFC and they cut him. Because his fighting style, I assume? Yeah, it has to be. Not the most exciting kid 
but also there's not a ton of Canadian stars. He looks apart, speaks well, fucking tough to beat. But you look at his fights, all decisions. Yeah, he's not the most exciting fighter. That's that's what they're basing off of. It's a shame. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.